Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hey everybody, the old captain here, and we have a very unique request. Uh, this comes from Paul. Paul writes, Hey Cabby, I know you live in Minnesota, and not by choice, uh, so I thought this would be an article you would shake your head at. Could you make one of your instructional videos about it? Why Florida is smart and Mark Dayton is an idiot? Of course you know what's going to happen. When Dayton bankrupts the state, he will be looking for a federal bailout. Well, the difference is we won't because Minnesota has a balanced budget amendment, so we actually have better finances than what you mentioned. If Puerto Rico gets bailed out uh, by Congress, you get bad places like New Jersey, Illinois, Rhode Island, and soon Minnesota will follow. Well, California, I think, would probably be a, a different one. So uh, we here in Texas, a business-friendly state, will have to bail out your worthless state. So actually, it won't happen in that case here for Minnesota. But you are right. Basically, in it's the it's producers versus parasites. You could talk about the individual or the states, but the productive states where people actually work, the Republican states, will bail out the leftist Democrat states over the course of time. I mean, what, New York City got bailed out in the 70s, I think it was, early 80s? Well, what do we think that was? That was a bunch of hardworking Republican-type people bailing out a bunch of fucking worthless Democrat people. Uh, <clears throat> da, 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 da. Let me know how much I owe you for this one. So let me, I'll, I'll go through the article. I've already read it. I'm, I'll probably just skim it a little bit here. <laughs> then I will explain you Minnesota uh, for all you other people. Minnesota's great wealth migration. Billions of dollars. Uh, here we go. Three years ago next month, a longtime Twin City CEO joined about 20 other Minnesota business leaders to meet privately with Governor Dayton in downtown Minneapolis. The governor talked about the state's business climate and his priorities, and then the format opened up to a question and answer session. It was just as the governor and legislature were forming significant tax increases for wealthier Minnesotans, and it followed intensifying auditing of individuals accused of skirting state residency laws based on a list of 26 factors used to determine whether the individual owed Minnesota taxes. So what's happening here in Minnesota is a lot of people are saying, fuck this, we're going down to Florida because it's warmer and they don't have personal income taxes. And then this all of a sudden upsets Mark Dayton, who is a Democrat, and our um, Democrat Senate, but a Republican legislature. So uh, they're, now they're trying to say, well, you, 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 and now they're starting to throw up barriers and ways to tax you. I brought up that people are leaving, people who have a fair bit of assets and the ability to and wherewithal to leave. And what worries me is that when they do, they're not going to come back because they learn that they can live in really nice places and not pay our state income tax, says the CEO who heads a near century old business with 600 employees at 200 million in annual revenue. His response was, well, people are free to live wherever they want to. So his answer was, he doesn't care if they leave. So that's Mark Dayton saying that. Okay. The CEO, except if you did, if you didn't care, then why are you throwing up these 26 things to catch the money? So, it, but you have to understand our governor, who I'll go into later. The CEO moved to Naples, Florida, while keeping his company's headquarters and its 250 employees in the Twin Cities. He says he would have stayed had he felt more welcome. It's one of those things I said to Mark. If you can just make it a little more fair for entrepreneurs and business owners, many of us would say that's okay. I can deal with it. But it doesn't seem like you want to keep us here. Minnesota now has an anti-success feeling. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> Billions leaving. Uh, Minnesota lost or began to lose an estimated $2.1 billion in taxable income from 3,099 taxpayers. According to a research study on the wealth migration conducted by Twin Cities Business with the help of research firm the Morris Leatherman Company, these same individuals have $17 billion in median net worth and $31 billion in median gross state uh, median gross estate value. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, this has been going on in Minnesota to the point that Mark Dayton, our governor, and this is why they're coming up with these rules. And I had to look into this because uh, I have my house here in the WBL, Minnesota, uh, and I like this town, uh, but I hate winter and the hell if I want to be here. I want to be a resident of another state, preferably Florida, South Dakota, um, Nevada, someplace where there is no state income tax. Uh, but they're already throwing up rules like, well, if, if you're here for over 180 days and you're here 181st day, uh, then you owe us income tax. And it can, and it's caught people before 
where, for example, they know they got to leave that day, but then a snowstorm hits and you're stuck at the airport past midnight. Bam! They got your bitchin' sorry ass. So um, this is basically uh, capital flight. Money will go where it's treated best. And so I did want to cover, and I'm going to explain it because I never understood why people are like, oh, Minnesota, I just think it's so nice. I'm going to explain to you why you should never invest in Minnesota and you should go to Florida instead. Or Nevada, or South Dakota, or pretty much any other place other than Minnesota. So let's go through a couple things. First, I'm going to explain Mark Dayton. Mark Dayton uh, is the grandson of the founder of Dayton Department Stores, uh, which has turned into Macy's. But you may know it a little bit more than the Target Corporation, which is kind of a big company. He is your classical trust fund baby spoiled fuck. Um, this guy has never worked a real job in his life. He got his degree in psychology. He went and became a teacher in New York for like a year and a half. And then he started running for office. He was a senator of ours one time. And it is rumored, but I can almost guarantee you confirm he's on prescription meds and he's an alcoholic. <clears throat> he is weird. He is off his rocker. And the only reason he gets elected is, well, one, because he has the money, and two, because he has the last name Dayton. And Dayton carries a very huge pull here. And Minnesotans are idiots, and they'll vote for a guy with the last name. And I'm sure it's the same thing, like, you know, in your town, you have, probably have the, the local billionaire or whatever, and they have the last name. Well, I trust them. They have very good service over at Dayton Corporation. I think it's the exact... No, it's like this kid is like two generations removed from the real man that put the work into it. And he is, he is just... I wish I could call him a playboy because that would actually be cool. He's just a douche. He's just a trust fund baby, whacked out, drugged out, drinking douche. And he's just bored and he wanted to run for Senate. He got it. And he ran for governor and he got it. And thank God he's retiring this, uh, this term. I mean, we'll be replaced by another leftist. And I'd say, well, Aaron, well, how come Minnesota's so educated? They're really smart. They have the best schools. How would they vote for it? Well, okay, let's talk about the second thing, and that is Minnesotans' mentality or their political mentality. Minnesota was founded <clears throat> predominantly by Nordic Scandinavian type immigrants, and they brought with it their socialist uh, beliefs and culture. And so Minnesota, you've know, you'll note this, we're, we're always liberal, we're always leftist, uh, because we have to take care of everybody. Half, I think it's in our state uh, constitution that half of our budget has to go to education, whether they deserve it or not, whether there's kids to educate or not, or whether the kids are even receptive to education, predominantly in our two major cities, St. Paul and Minneapolis, where the kids just don't give a flying fuck about education, because their kids and their uh, parents and their teachers don't give a flying fuck about education. Anyway. So there's this mentality that the state was founded by socialists, not like political socialists, but people who came from socialist type cultures. So they just love helping the children and we just need more good. They, they, they think the government could solve all the problems. Now, this has a very interesting effect though. They're, they're suckers. These people have like the greatest work ethic. They're so swipple. Um, the, the, those that hail from this culture are so swipple they will work so hard no matter what their tax rate is. So we actually do have quite high taxes. I think like aside from New York, California, and Jersey, and Illinois, we're up there somewhere. But these people will slave their ass away uh, not thinking about, well, it's, it's, it's just good for the children. It's just good for the poor. And you're kind of like, do you guys have any street smarts? And you'll see them. You see these dumb shits, these fucking sheeple, these lemmings lined up on the interstate to go and work. So this is why corporations are here. And this is why um, we typically do better <clears throat> in the economy despite having somewhat of a socialist state. Corporations, as, a, as per our population or per capita, we have more Fortune 50, Fortune 500 companies employing people here. Despite the taxes, because of the fucking suckers that will line up and work for, for cheap, for, for very little pay. Um, so that's why you see, uh, uh, despite it being a socialist, we do recover quite well because we have that Scandinavian Norwegian work ethic. We must pay for the poor. We must, would you like some blood here? Let me cut my veins open. There you go. So if you're looking to hire people, yes, please come to Minnesota. They're suckers. They'll work for anything and they don't care what they're taxed. <coughs> um, but the, um, what was I going to say? Oh, but the mentality is totally leftist here. Totally leftist. At, at best, your Republicans are like, well, we should help the children. But we voted for freaking, uh, 
We're the only one that didn't vote for Reagan in 1984. We're the only state. Freaking Reagan won California. And Mondale scored Minnesota. And that was it. We're the only ones to vote for Reagan. So this is a very leftist, liberal culture. So if you are an entrepreneur, if you are hardworking, if you want to capitalize, if you are looking to achieve excellent and excellence and not conformance, you are not going to get along here. This is, this is an obey. We're all in it together. A socialist commune team. All right. The other thing that what ends up happening is that the Minnesotans love bringing in immigrants because like our Swedish counterparts across the country or across the Pacific, or Atlantic, there's a lot of white guilt here. And so we bring in, we have the largest Somali uh, population. Mark Dayton himself says that we can't rely on white people in Minnesota. That's not the future. Um, it, 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 we just bend over backwards and we, don't, we do not hold anyone up to any kind of working standards here in Minnesota. If you are unemployed, it's because of racism, discrimination, privilege, or something else. It's not because you're a lazy fuck. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that. So uh, we have immigrants coming in. Um, they, they jack up the cost of government. Um, and they will change the demographics. And, um, it, and now I will give the Somalis a little bit of credit because I know a lot of people don't like the immigrants. But the Somalis, a lot of, disproportionate amount of them do go on welfare. Uh, but a lot of them do have the hustle. Some of them even have started going into Republican uh, politics. <clears throat> but uh, they become the taxi cab drivers and all that. But the vast majority of them do go on welfare. And uh, it pisses me off. But just, you know, just keep that in mind. You know, you want to come here and you want to raise kids? Okay, 20 years, what's the, what's the demographics going to look like? Do you got to worry about this becoming like a Malmo? What are your taxes going to look like when all of a sudden it ain't, uh, it ain't all uh, swipple white people voting in the occasional Republican uh, governor? So our uh, demographics are definitely going to change. Um, but uh, and, and I think it would just be more socialist down the road. So before you plant roots, consider that. Uh, quite literally, let's look at corporate taxes between Florida and Minnesota. Uh, corporate taxes in Florida is 5.5%. Minnesota, it's 9.8%. So roughly double a little bit, 40% more. Personal taxes, 0% in Florida and anywhere between 5 and 10% in Minnesota, depending on whether you are poor or whether you actually work for a living. Um, they hate successful people here. They just do not like successful people here. Uh, so right there, I mean, seriously, I don't know why you would bother setting up a company in Minnesota versus Florida or Vegas or South Dakota or any other place. Um, but you can, you can significantly increase, especially if you're paid in dividends or you run a company, you can, you can get an extra 20% uh, income just going down to, well, South Dakota. But you can save a lot of money just not coming here. Uh, let's also talk about the people. It's Minnesota nice. Uh, these are the most backstabbing, hypocritical motherfuckers you'll ever meet in your life. Now, of course, there are nice people in Minnesota. I have some very dear friends. Uh, but the vast majority of Minnesotans are shallow. If you've ever gone to New York or Chicago, let's take this as a different example. Even if they are leftists, even if they are liberals, they're honest with you. Like, you know, you get into a bar, you, you accidentally bump into a guy, you know, it's a crowded bar, you bump into the guy, the guy says, hey, watch my back over here. Like, oh, sorry, I say, yeah, forget about it. Minnesotans are just like, you bump into them and they will resent, they will hate, and they'll hold it over you. Um, it, it, is, it is just, I wouldn't trust anyone. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Like, if you said, ah, who would you trust, somebody from Chicago or someone from Minnesota? I'd say Chicago. <laughs> I'll trust somebody from Southside Chicago. Before, because it's it's just this, especially if you're not here. Uh, people who come here have a little bit of trouble uh, adapting. Thank God there's like migrant communities from Wisconsin. But these, I mean, they're just so fake. Imagine an HR gal, just like, hello, welcome to General Mills. I see you have an it. I mean, just just like you don't. It, it, it's really hard to crack into, and I I wish I could put it on my finger on it, but this, you know. That's such a nice sweater. She's such a whore, bitch, wedge cunt. I mean, just, you know, you'll find your butt. You better have a family to hang out with because, I mean, seriously, if you are, if you're young and single, okay, you'll find some people over at the campus. But if you are, like, retired or you're an empty nester and, like, you ain't got a family to raise, it's kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I prefer something a little bit more blue color. Uh, uh, then, uh, finally, the weather. Forget everything I've said above. I mean, that should deter you from Minnesota from investing at all. The weather fucking sucks here. It is worse in Minnesota than it is in most parts of Alaska. 
Now, you got to get into the. I mean, it is colder in Minnesota than it typically is in Anchorage because at least they got the freaking uh, the the Pacific moderating their climate. It's miserable here. It's miserable. Uh, you get traffic jams with the snow. Now they do a pretty damn good job plowing. I will grant uh, our Department of Transportation that. But have you ever experienced 20 below? Have you ex ever experienced like negative 35 wind chill? I mean, the exhaust from this called black ice, the exhaust from uh, the cars and, and the trucks will freeze immediately on the road, but you can't see it. It's what we call black ice. And all of a sudden you hit a patch of it and boom, there's a crash. Uh, it's just miserable. It is miserable at least three months a year here. Uh, it, you are, I mean, now there's some sick weirdos who are like, I can't wait to go ice fishing. I can't wait to play hockey. Oh, this is nothing. I got, yeah, fuck all of you guys. Okay, for the normal people, it is, it is miserable. You have to worry. Uh, it, what it is is your, your body is telling you for three months, your body is constantly telling you, we're going to die. We're, there's a threat of death here right now, and it wears on your psychology. Plus the lack of sun because we're so far up north. Fuck that. I mean, shit, I'd rather, seriously, I'd rather be, well, maybe not California. <clears throat> yeah, I'd live in Southern California before I'd live in Minnesota. Um, if the choice was up to me. Well, why are you still there? You could have moved any time. It's like, no, I have a girlfriend here who keeps getting promoted. And so I got to, but we're, we're going to be on our way out relatively soon. But once we start making our, we're not, we're not here. We're fucking not here. When we have fun, free time, we're not here. Um, so just the weather alone is reason enough not to come here. I cannot, I cannot, unless you've lived it, unless you've experienced it, I cannot explain to you how cold and miserable it is. F at least three months out of the year, six months out of the year, you can't go out and bike. You can't go ride your motorcycle. It's miserable. It sucks here. Don't come here. So anyway, th to summarize Minnesota, because of their hubris and arrogance, because they think they're just so intelligent, it's just, it's just Minnesota nice, and uh, the pompous, ar arrogant attitude, and they, they think they got a culture. It's, it, it's like the fat woman who thinks she's hot. There's nothing of value to an entrepreneur, an investor, a rich person, or anybody with hustle who is aspiring to become great. There's nothing here. There's a thousand other places better than to set up your business and set up your life and plant roots than Minnesota. You could go to Las Vegas. It's fun. It's warm. I mean, then if it gets a little hot, hey, you know what? Then maybe visit Minnesota and do a little bit of fishing. All right. <clears throat> uh, but you pay in no taxes. Uh, there's South Dakota. If you like winter, you can have it there, but it's much more mild. Go out to Rapid City. You don't pay your state or, or personal income taxes. Uh, it, you get your snow, but it's it's not that bitter cold. Some of you crazy people. I like the seasons. It's like, ugh. So if you want to have a white Christmas, you can live in South Dakota. Um, what else? I mean, there's Washington State. Mountains, water, trees, more moderate climate, even though you got the hippies in Seattle. Uh, Arizona, even though they got taxes, it's warm. Florida, oh my God. You want to talk about great food and culture and, um, you know, at least, you know, uh, they'll take in immigrants, but at least it's a pro-capitalist. It's got a little bit of hustle. Texas, I'm not a terribly big fan of Texas. I think it's kind of flat and dry and boring, but, you know, at least it's warm. No, no taxes, uh, personal or uh, income. Um, and then what's the other one? Tennessee go? Did Tennessee go tax-free? I mean... You don't, even, you don't have to worry about the taxes, the weather alone. Anything south of the Mason-Dixon line is better than freaking Minnesota. Um, so just seriously, don't come here. Uh, I've lived here 20 years of my life. I, I went to college here. You plant roots. You end up getting suckered in. You gotta, you know, This is where you make your money. Please do not make the mistake I did. Do not come here. Go somewhere else. Live somewhere else. Enjoy the sun. Enjoy chicks that don't have fucking 80,000 pounds of fat on them to keep them warm. And when I'm kidding, there's some good looking broads here. But man, it, 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 you could even tell in the 90s, at least the girls were thin. But um, man, something's happened. Uh, but it's just don't come here. Don't invest here. If you are a producer, if you are a hustler, you got some... You got some uh, hustle in you. You got some kind of goals or dream. You want to achieve excellence. You're an accomplisher. Don't come here. There's a bunch of other places that are much better 
and we'll treat you much nicer and, and we'll be much warmer than Minnesota. So anyway, that's all I got. Please do not come to Minnesota. It is just not worth it. Best of luck. Toodles.